Hey everybody, how's it going? It's The Daily Shooter, and today I've got a quick unboxing for you. We're going to be taking a look at something that I've been really excited for, the Vortex Razor HD Gen 3 1 to 10. I have been waiting for this thing for quite a while. As a matter of fact, I believe I put my order in back in maybe March of 2020. It's now late December, but we all know what happened back in March of 2020, right? That's when inventory on pretty much everything just completely fell off. So we're going to be taking a look at this. We'll talk a little bit about the tech specs and details. Remember, this is not a review. It's just just kind of an unboxing and a first impression. So let's go ahead and move the camera to the table and get started. Now the first thing I want to mention is the optic that we're going to be taking a look at today is the version with the EBR9 BDC reticle in MOA and this is a first focal plane optic. Secondly, I want to say this is some of the nicest packaging that I've seen for an optic in a long time. I know there's a lot of guys out there who wouldn't mind it just being thrown in a regular cardboard box and shipped out if it saves the end user a couple bucks, but to be honest with you it would probably just be a couple bucks because large companies like Vortex can actually make things and have packaging that just doesn't cost much at all so it's not really going to save you money. And when it comes to an optic like this that comes in close to that $2,000 price point, uh, I like to see a little bit of presentation and they definitely did a pretty good job at that here. So let's go and open this thing up. Uh, it's got some magnets in the front. Open up this front flap, lift this thing up, and you can see that we have this nice top cover right here. It's got our optic on it. If we slide this thing down, you'll see that we have our instruction manuals that are in the uh, top portion of the lid right here. So we have a couple pamphlets that give you information on how to mount it, how to adjust it, how to use it, features, and all that stuff. So those two things are going to be located in the lid right there. And as we take this piece off right here, you're actually going to see that uh, it's kind of a thick protective layer of foam. It's actually pretty nice. As a matter of fact, I mean, you could put this down and, and service the optic if you needed to on this mat because it is kind of like a mat instead of just, you know, a, a top cover. But uh, that looks really nice right there. Let's go ahead and set that to the side. So in here we have what looks to be, okay, this is our inspection card right here. So it says pass and it has uh, your signature there. You guys know that Vortex has one of the best warranties in the market, hands down, and that warranty travels from person to person. So if you have any issues, you can always send it back. Uh, if they can't fix it, they send you a new one. It's, it's probably the best warranty in the industry. Uh, they also give you a nice die cut sticker, which is pretty cool right there. So we have a Team Vortex sticker. And then what is this? Okay, so this is going to be like our little accessories pouch right here, a little attention on the top. Move that to the side and see what we got in here. So I see one battery in this blue bag. It's a CR2032. And then we also have a throw lever, which is really nice. So if you guys want to add a throw lever or not, you can do that. Does not come pre-installed. Uh, looks like we have our little multi-tool. You guys might be used to these by now, but uh, this is a little multi-tool that you, they give you. It has, uh, I believe it's a torque set on one side and it's got a little flathead screwdriver on the other side and you can use this to service the optic. And let's see what else we have in here. We have another battery. I believe this thing actually runs off of 2032, uh, two 2032 batteries. So uh, we have two batteries there in the blue bags. And then this right here is a lens cleaning cloth. So you can use that to clean your lens. Now, another cool thing about this optic uh, is that, as you can see, it's packaged really nice and securely. So you know when it gets to you, it's going to be in good condition. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but it also comes with a sunshade. And that's nice as well. The cool thing about this sunshade versus maybe some other uh, low power variable optics that are out there is that it doesn't add too much in length. It looks like it's maybe two and a half inches, maybe three inches sunshade. It's not super long, but this optic right here, we pull it out and take a closer look at it, is very short in the front. So this was kind of designed for military applications. And one of the things that uh, you know they do in the military is they add clip-on devices like night vision and stuff like that in front of the optic. So keeping an optic uh, short in the front can help because obviously you have a limited amount of space. And so uh, you'll see some other companies that do this as well. They keep that front nose short for clip-on devices, just a kind of a space saving solution. So adding this really doesn't add too much versus what you might find in a typical, let's see, like the HD Razer Gen 2 1 to 6 or something like that. Uh, interestingly enough, I believe this is the same weight. It comes in around 21 ounces. It's the uh, same weight as the Vortex Razer 1 to 8. So going from that 1 to 8 to the 1 to 10 didn't cost any extra weight. And I think that's pretty cool too. So uh, it, everything looks really nice. Now, 
interestingly enough, I hear people say that this kind of looks like a purple, and I'll have to review the, the footage here when I'm done. I mean, I'm looking at it with my naked eye right now, and it looks like a, I guess you could say a stealth gray if you want to, you know, call it that. On camera, looking in the little camera video previewer there, uh, it looks like the color might be a little bit different, but to my naked eye, it does kind of look like a gray, even though I've heard people say it looks kind of purplish. Uh, for me, again, I don't see that, but it does look like a very nice scope. Uh, it feels like it's got some good heft to it. It's definitely got a nice, you know, a lot of nice features, and we'll go over some of those, you know, kind of as, as the first impression goes on, but uh, other than that, I mean, this thing, it looks really, really nice. This is not the first 1 to 10. Uh, it is, I believe, the first 1 to 10 from Vortex, but it's not the first 1 to 10. And I'm really interested to do a comparison video between this right here, which comes in, again, close to $2,000. Uh, you can save some money if you want to use my discount code. You guys can always head over to my website, uh, thedailyshooter.com. That'll be linked down below. And you can find all my discount codes and stuff, and you can use the discount code on this as well. But I'm really curious to do a comparison between this and my favorite 1 to 10, at least as of right now, which is the Swamp Fox Optics 1 to 10. Uh, which has the same, you know, kind of overall design. So let's kind of move this box out of the way and just go over some of the quick features. Again, remember, this is not a review. We're just talking about, you know, some of the specs. Now, the first thing I noticed when I pushed that box to the side and I, I made sure that it was empty is that there are no lens covers in the box. So we don't have any flip up lens caps. We don't have any bikini style caps or anything like that. The only thing that's on there is going to be this little flimsy, uh, plastic cover for the front lens, but it's nothing that I would really use. It's just, you know, kind of like a cheap plastic piece. I mean, maybe they expect you to use it, but for the most part, you know, if you guys were wondering if it came with any uh, caps, no, it does not come with any caps. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the specs and some of the details of this optic right here, because there really is a, a lot to offer. So this is, um, again, it's powered by a CR2032. It's a one to 10, it's first focal plane. Uh, it's got a ton of eye relief, which is great. So you're looking at about 3.6 inches of eye relief, which is what they say that it has. Uh, I know that when it comes to the Vortex Rager HDs that I've used in the past, that's some of the best eye relief and, and probably the best eye box that I've seen in an LPVO. It's just extremely clear, edge to edge clarity. Just looking through this right now, uh, I can say that this looks like it matches up with the previous ones that I've used, or maybe even just a little bit better. You know, they're waterproof. They have all those great features. This actually is parallax free at 100 yards. And so, you know, typical stuff, 34 millimeter uh, body, which is great, uh, allows great light transmission, allows for a nice clear picture. So I, I prefer nowadays a 34 millimeter tube. Um, I used to be all about 30 millimeter, try and save just a little bit of weight. But to be honest with you, I think a 34 millimeter just has too many benefits to, to look over. So let me go ahead and read some of the stuff that they said this has here. I know that's kind of lame, but uh, I'll read it to you because I usually do a lot of research in months before I post a review on something, so I haven't memorized all this stuff yet. But it says that, you know, it has their HD optical system, XR fully multi-coated uh, lenses. It has the APO system uh, for the lens color, first focal plane, uh, let's see here, etched glass reticle, daylight bright illumination, armor tech, ultra hard scratch resistant coating, shockproof, rugged, uh, it's IPX7 waterproof, which is nice, and it's fog proof, and it's purged with argon gas, and then, uh, you know, says like all the regular stuff you're using, like aircraft grade aluminum and all that stuff, but uh, it seems pretty nice. We have real low profile turrets on it. Um, you can see right here, nice low profile turrets or windage and elevation are going to be low profile on either side. Take off the cap. Uh, it's a very nice cap, anodized both in and out. Uh, it's got some really nice knurling on the side right there and also knurling on the turret itself. And then on the top, you can see it says one MOA equals 0.25 or one click equals 0.25 MOA. So it's basically a one quarter MOA per click, uh, which is going to give you a lot of adjustment. And again, that's both for windage and elevation. Uh, the brightness adjustment is going to be on this side right here. And I believe, is it one of the pull out? Yeah. So it's one of the ones where you would uh, pull it out in order to make your brightness adjustment. And then when you're done making your brightness adjustment, then you go ahead and you pop that thing back in there. So you see that, that white ring right there. That means that you're uh, pulled out and you can go ahead and you can make your adjustments and then you push it back in and you're good to go. So I do like that because it kind of locks things in. And the other thing that I like about this too is that when you're going through your brightness adjustments, it has an off position uh, in between each one of the brightness settings. And I know that doesn't seem like that big of a deal these days, but it wasn't that long ago that almost nobody had that. And you had to go through the entire brightness uh, 
gambit in order to get back down to off. You know, you go all the way to bright and then all the way back down to off. So, you know, having an off in position in between each one of your brightness settings is actually nice. It's going to be in the same spot as our battery compartment right here as well. So, I mean, all in all, you know, it has a lot of features that you're pretty much used to in a, an LPVO, uh, in something by Vortex especially. But at the same time, you know, that 1 to 10, you just can't beat a 1 to 10. It's a, perfect in my opinion. So here's what I'm looking for in my upcoming review of this 1 to 10. When I dial this thing down to 1, I want it to have no magnification whatsoever. I want it to look like a true 1x. I want to be able to look through it with both eyes open. I want to see the same size target that I'm looking at with, you know, just one eye closed. It has to be the same and be a nice true 1x. I'll even give it a 1.1 if, you know, there's just a variance, a super slight variance in maybe magnification on that one power. But I'm looking for very close to perfect here in that 1x. And then dialing all the way up to 10, I want to see a nice amount of magnification. Uh, it feels like it has a pretty nice smooth throw. Uh, the one that I had previously, the 1 to 8, the Vortex HD, uh, that one was a lot tighter than this. This one moves pretty nice. And I assume that it's going to move a lot nicer once we put that uh, focus ring on there, or that magnification ring on there, just to kind of assist it a little bit. But it moves really nice. I'm sure it'll go through the magnification range, no problem. Being first focal plane, you're going to see that reticle enlarge. You know, and you can use the bullet drop compensation in it at any magnification level, and I'm going to test that out as well. So if I put this thing up at six power, and I use the holdovers in that BDC reticle, uh, it should be the same as if I'm dialed all the way up to 10. I shouldn't have any type of variation right there either. So uh, that looks pretty nice. Everything else seems like it's pretty cool. So obviously, again, this is not a full review. It's just, you know, a first look. And first impressions so far are great. This thing seems fairly compact. The weight didn't change very much. And you get that full range, which is really, to be honest with you, a lot harder to achieve than I think most people know. Uh, going all the way from one power all the way up to 10 times magnification, you used to have to go with a 2 to 10 or a 2.5 to 10 in order to reach that, where you'd be dialed down all the way at your lowest and you'd still be at a 2 or a 2.5 power. This allows you no magnification at all and somehow manages to get you all the way up to 10. The Swamp Fox Optics does the same thing and it does it really well. So again, uh, comparing an optic that costs about half of what this costs should be a lot of fun. But we're going to do a review of this on its own independently first. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. So anyway, if you guys are interested in more information about this, you can always, again, check out my website. Website's linked down below. That's where all my discount codes, coupons, and links and stuff are being held since we can't do that on YouTube. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.